For the past several weeks, we've been looking at Psalms that contain themes that Jesus then later on used as a part of his teaching and preaching ministry. And we've especially been looking at uh, his Sermon on the Mount, that first major teaching and specific Beatitudes that uh, Jesus used right at the beginning in Matthew chapter five. Well, today we wanna take a look at one more of those sections of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew five, verse 14, where Jesus said, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Now, when Jesus first spoke those words, he was sitting on a hillside or standing on a hillside and the people were all there and he could point to a little town up on the northeast shore of the Sea of Galilee. And that little town at night with its lights on became a beacon, a guide for the fishermen that were out late or through the night, for travelers who found themselves out on the Sea of Galilee late in the day. But there's more to it than just simply a little town on a hilltop. Because Jesus is calling us to be a light, a light for others. And that mandate for us as followers of Jesus, that mandate for us as disciples, really comes out of that idea throughout the Old Testament that the Lord is our light. And so we wanna look at a Psalm today, Psalm 27, that reflects that idea. So while you're grabbing your Bibles for Psalm 27, just some background for this Psalm. The author is David and the theme overall is the Lord provides protection and there is this desire to be close to the Lord. It's a Psalm of lament it's a psalm of confidence. Some have even thought it was maybe a part of a royal liturgy that David would use as part of his worship. There's three parts to this psalm. Verses one through six are a statement of confidence in which God is spoken about and talks about the blessings that have been received. Then verses seven through 12 is a lament about enemies and about requests that are made of God. God is spoken to, and it is talking about blessings that are requested. And then finally, verses 13 through 14 are a conclusion to the Psalm. So let's take a look at Psalm 27, where David writes, the Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, 
I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath they threaten me with violence. Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. So David states, the Lord is my light. But Jesus states, you and me are the light of the world. But now listen to what the Apostle John says in John chapter 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The Word that gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. And then Jesus himself in John chapter 8 verse 12 says, I am the light of the world. And in John chapter 3, John, the Apostle John, records that the light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more. So what does it mean that the Lord, Yahweh, the creator of all, is my light? What does it mean that Jesus says, you, me, we are the light of the world? And that Jesus himself says in one of those great I am passages, I am the light of the world. What is Jesus saying to us? What's David saying to us? Well, Psalm 27 reminds us of these truths. With the Lord as our light, we can face our fears. We can face our enemies. Nothing can stand against us, against him. Remember in Exodus chapter 14, when Israel is fleeing Egypt, the Lord as light was not only their guide along the way, but the Lord became as light, became that barrier which separated the Egyptians from the Israelites. In verses 1 through 3, remember what David said. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. Is David 
reflecting on Exodus chapter 14, the Lord as his light. But then second of all, in this Psalm, David reminds us that it is the light that shapes our desires. David had one thing that he desired, one thing that he wanted above all else. You might recall, just as an aside, Mary had that one thing also in Luke chapter 10, that when Jesus was there with Mary and Martha, Martha kind of complained, Mary's not helping me. And Jesus said, she's chosen the one thing needful. But in this Psalm, it is the presence of the Lord. It is the presence of the light described in these verses, verses four through six, that is the one thing necessary. David said, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. Now, is he going to live in the temple? The temple wasn't even built at the time that David said this. But what he's referring to is the Lord's presence, that the Lord is there, and that David understands that connection between he and the Lord. But then third, this psalm reminds us that there's a new confidence that the Lord is always with us. <clears throat> it's revealed in that light of his presence. So when we pray, when we need help, when we feel abandoned, when we have lost our way and we need a new path to follow, remember Psalm 119, Verse 105 says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light for my path. When we are suffering, it is the Lord who becomes our light. And that's reflected in verses 7 through 12 of this psalm. But ultimately, at the very end, David reminds us that the Lord is our light Jesus as our light, that there is the ultimate bright reality that the Lord in his faithfulness and his steadfast love will show us his goodness. All we have to do is wait. Verses 13 and 14 said this, yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. And it is all of this that the Lord had in mind when he said to you and to me, you are the light of the world. This is what the light does for us. This is the message that we as followers of the light, that disciples of the light have for others that we might share with them. The assurance, the confidence, the hope, the reality that rather than being stamped out by the darkness, Jesus, David, reminds us that the light has come into the world and the darkness has not overcome it. Satan tried, but he failed. And so as reflectors of the light, we can say, and we can pray with David, I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness now and in eternity and I will wait patiently on the light of his presence. Amen.